Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. It's a quick lesson on dividing radical expressions, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So once again, uh, I don't know that the rules are as necessary to remember in this one. Uh, with division of radicals, you know, we may be looking at the quotient rule there, or the again, the expanded power rule stuff, maybe even negative exponents. But, um, well, the first part, we're going to be looking at rationalizing denominators. All right, dividing radicals, we've seen this already, where we take the square root of, seems like we did something like the square root of 49 over 25. And uh, we could rewrite that as the square root of 49 over the square root of 25. I, f I forget which section it was, maybe it was 6.1. Uh, the square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 25 is 5, so we could have just written it as 5 sevenths. That's all that rule is saying right there, is we can split it up into separate roots. All right, rationalizing denominators. Uh, for some reason, it's considered informal to have roots or radicals in your denominators. So we can't have them anymore, and that's okay. So if you had that as like a dinner party. So we're going to use factors of 1 to eliminate the radicals, just like we did. Um, well, we weren't eliminating stuff, I guess. But to find common denominators when we were multi I'm sorry, adding and subtracting polynomials. Uh, just to demonstrate this, right? right? If we had something like this, we'd want common denominators. So I would multiply the other fraction by x minus 2. But again, it's as a factor of 1. So it's really x minus 2 over x minus 2. That's as far as I go, because I know you guys are already hating that. But the idea is the same with radicals. It's just that it's not necessarily the same thing. The objective here is to get rid of the fraction in the exponent, okay, or to make it a whole value, which essentially kind of gets rid of the fraction. Um, it'll take some intuitiveness on this, on your part, like sometimes we just want the closest whole value, and for the most part, we're just looking at adding those values together, okay? So, for example, um, we'll move away from the polynomial stuff. If I had 1 over x, well, the cube root of x, uh, that's not formal, so, you know, no dinner party for you, but we can make it formal, all right? So what would I need? Well... Right there, I've got x to the power of one-third, right? And if I could just add another two-thirds to that, then I could make it x to the power of one, right? So how would I do that? I'd have to multiply it by x to the two-thirds. But if I multiply that by x to the two-thirds in the denominator, again, I have to make it a factor of one by multiplying the numerator by x to the power of, sorry, that's two-thirds like that, okay? Square root of, yeah, that's the square root. Square root of 3 over x cubed. I'm going to split this up so that I got the square root of 3 over the square root, I guess we don't need the 2 there, of x cubed. Now, if we can consider the last way that we just looked at, I would be multiplying this, right, because that's really x to the power of 1 third again. I'm sorry, that's 2 thirds. Mm -hmm. That would be x to the power of, right, because the x is to the power of 3, so it's 3, and then it's the square root, so it's really 3 halves right there. Now, if I can make another 1 half onto that, or tack on another 1 half to that, then I would have a whole value, right? So if I could say that I'm going to add a 1 half to that, then it's the same as taking x to the 3 halves times x to the 1 half. Now, this is just in the denominator, right? So, if I were to look at my x's, I'd have 3 halves plus 1 halves, which is 4 halves. And that ends up being x squared. So, in my denominator, I'm going to end up with x squared because I multiplied that by x to the power of 1 half. But I, I can't forget to do that in the numerator as well. So, I've got to multiply it by x to the 1 half in the numerator which really is just the square root of x. So again, I'm going to combine those two square roots as the square root of 
3x over x squared. Done. So as it turns out, and if, if you're struggling with that <coughs> exponent stuff, again, you could look at it as um, multiplying by the square root of x right there. And if I were to take this stuff and rewrite it, then I'd have the square root of x cubed times x, which is the square root of x to the fourth. So I've got two groups of two. That'd be x squared, just like we have in the denominator there. 2 divided by the square root of x, okay? Um, if I can make that x, x squared, then I'd be in good shape, right? So what I'm going to do is multiply it by another square root of x. But again, I've got to do it as a factor of 1. So this ends up being 2 times the square root of x. And I'm going to show this step uh, where we're going to combine those square roots of x. Again, it's not that everyone needs this part. But this is really the square root of x times x, <coughs> which is the square root of x squared. So yeah, the square root of x squared, the square root of anything squared is just itself. So we end up with 2. That's it. That's as far as we need to go on this. Normally when I finish. So rationalizing the denominator is not limited to just variables. And we may see numbers like this. Well, I, you will see numbers like this on the homework. Again, I'm going to split this up, though. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could look at simplifying the square root of 12, if it's possible, and it is. But let's say that we didn't notice that, okay? So <clears throat> what I would really want out of that is the square root of 12 squared, because that would give me just 12, right? So I'm going to multiply both of these by the square root of 12, the numerator and denominator, right? So that it's a factor of 1. So <clears throat> I've got the square root of 12y all over the square root of 12 squared, which is what we wanted, right? So that we just make that a 12. So we have 12 in the denominator. Now before we continue, let's look at the 12y, right? So I'll we have to consider just the square root of 12 like we had before. Now, can this be simplified? Well, we could make it 4 and 3. And before I continue, we got the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 is what that is. And the square root of 4 is a perfect square. And, yeah, we can't forget the square root of y on that, right? So the square root of 4 is 2. And then we got the square root of 3 times y. Now we got the 2 and 12, which can be simplified as well. So we'll just simplify those into 1 and 6. And we got the square root of 3y all over 6. So let's say back here, the black square root of 12 times the red square root of 12 here. That would have given me the square root of 144 which is a perfect square. The square root of 144 is 12. Now that uh, square root of 4 times the square root of 3 stuff also, we c you could have done that at the beginning, which may have made it a little bit easier. I don't know. But um, it is an option. But, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at this a little differently. So I don't want the 11th root of d to the power of 6. I want the 11th root of d to the power of 11, right? So I would multiply that by the 11th root of d to what power? 5, right? Because we need 5 more d's on that. Uh, but again, I've got to do that as a factor of 1. So I've got to take 1 times the 11th root of d to the 5th as well. While well, doing this, and if I multiply these two, right, because I've got the 11th root of d to the 6th now times d to the 5th, which is the 11th root of d to the 11th. Well, that's really d to the power of 11 over 11. I guess we can write that in right there, right? 11 divided by 11, which is just d. And that rationalizes 
the denominator on that. So my denominator, I have just D. And my numerator, I can't simplify that anymore. Just the 11th root of D to the power of 5. That'll do it. All right, rationalize this denominator. 14 breaks up into 7 and 2. It's not, I don't know. It's not really going to help us right there. Um, and, yeah, we could break this up into one full square root, I guess. Um, do we want to, though? So we'll just rationalize this by, actually, that x to the fourth is nice. Yeah, you could. I'm going to simplify both of these, both the numerator and denominator first, before we look at, into any kind of rationalization, all right? You know, it's already broke up for us. And yeah, this is part of that whole just focusing on one part at a time to make it smaller, simpler problems. Uh, so I'm going to break this all up into six different square roots, which you may or may not like. So again, the reason I'm breaking this up is so that I can break this up into smaller problems. And right now I have, well, I'm going to keep it at four smaller problems, okay? What I mean by that is I can focus on this x square root of x to the 11th, right? Uh, square root of x to the 11th, x to the 11th halves, which is the same as x to the power of 5 and 1 half which is like x to the power of 5 times x to the 1 half. Yeah, you guys don't need all these steps, right? No, that's easy, but I still don't get it. I mean, it makes it easier, but I still get lost. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, I mean, if you can split it up so it's simpler, right? Because this last part that I just wrote, not everyone would write that. It's really x to the fifth times um, the square root of x. Let's look at the c values then. Uh, well, this first c, square root of c to the eighth. Well, that's c to the power of eight halves, which is really c to the fourth. That one was nice. Now let's go to the next x's, square root of x to the fourth. So that would end up being x to the power of four halves, which is x squared. And finally, c to the thirteenth, yeah, we'll do it right here. C to the 13 halves, which is really C to the power of 6 and 1 half. Right? You guys like this part. C to the power of 6 times C to the power of 1 half. And I, I skipped that addition part of that. So it's C to the power of 6 times the square root of C. Uh, well, let's rewrite this now. Again, I didn't touch the square root of 15 or the square root of 14. Neither are perfect squares, and uh, they can be simplified. Okay, so <clears throat> let's rewrite this then. All right, this is simplified a little bit, uh, but of course we can simplify it even further. Uh, and then once we get this fully simplified, then we can focus on rationalizing the denominator, which is still not rationalized because we've got the square root of 14 and the square root of c in the denominator. All right, so I'm not going to touch the square root of 15 and the square root of 14 still, but I'm going to look at the x's, and uh, we've got that x to the fifth times the square root of x all over x squared. So what I end up with is um, that x to the power of 5 minus 2 times the square root of x, which is x cubed square root of x. And none of those exponents are negative, so they're going to stay in the numerator, which is good. Now the c's, there's more c's in the numerator than the denominator. And so when we, uh, I don't know, cancel out the c's, we got c to the fourth minus 6, um, We'll keep that square root of c in the denominator as well. We're not so concerned with that because it's not a whole exponent. And uh, that would be c to the power of negative 2, which means that those two c's are going to stay in the denominator. Uh, let's rewrite this now uh, that we have this 
that kind of simplified, right? I'm going to have the full, I don't know. I guess I kind of like it separated so we know what to multiply by. And what I mean by that is that square root of 14, I need to multiply that by another square root of 14 so that it just becomes 14. But again, it has to be a factor of 1. So I got to multiply it in the numerator as well. So that will get rid of the square root of 14, but I've also got to do it for the c value as well. So I got to multiply square root of c by the square root of c, but I've got to do it in the numerator as well so that it's a factor of 1. Okay. So the square root of 14 times the square root of 14 will end up being just 14. Um, then we got that c squared, which we didn't really touch. But now I've got the square root of c times the square root of c, which is c. And we need to acknowledge that as well. If I took the square root of 15 and multiplied it by the square root of 14, uh, that can be simplified. And I had that square root of c as well, which I'll just combine those square roots. And uh, I guess formally we would want those in front, but let's, let's look at what else we had there. I also had the square root of x in the numerator. And we did 14 times 15. So that's all in the square root. And then we also got that x cubed in the numerator. Well, let's just simplify this, and I guess we'll take it into a more formal notation, which means we want that x cubed in the front times the square root of 210. I don't know, xc, cx, whatever. And then we got divided by 14, but this is c cubed now. Well, that's uh, as far as we can take that one. I, I don't know. It was slightly painful. Not too bad, though. Yeah, let's look at this a different way. I'm going to combine the two uh, square roots on this. All right. <clears throat> um, I can keep the square root on this and just start simplifying stuff. And the 14 and 15, as we saw, won't simplify. But I can start combining my x's right there. And I have more x's in the numerator than denominator by 7, or 11 minus 4 is 7. The c values on this one, I got more c's in the denominator than the numerator by 5. So I got c to the fifth in the denominator on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I got the square root of 15 over 14, right? And then I'm splitting this up. I've got x to the power of 7 halves. And we've already seen how that splits up, right? And then we got c to the power of 5 halves in the denominator. You can write those separate if you want. And I'm just trying to speed it up because we've seen it already. And uh, 7 divided by 2 for the x, that would give us 3 and a half. So that's x to the power of 3 square root of x. And then 5 halves would be c to the power of 2. And then the square root of c. And yeah, we've seen that already. And then we have the square root of 15 and 14. You can write those together as separate, whatever. It's not going to make any difference. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to combine my square root. So I've got x cubed square root of 15x all over c squared square root of 14c. Um, and again, I've got I to get rid of that square root of 14c, right? So I could just multiply it by itself square root of 14c, but i got to do it in the numerator also. And that would give us x cubed. Square root, we did 15 times 14, right? 210. xc all over c squared times 14c. And, uh, yeah, we can change that to 14c cubed, which is what we had before. A little faster, but partially because I was skipping steps as well. Wait, wait, wait. We'll do this one the same way. They're both cube roots, so we'll just make it one giant cube root, right? 
So this is the cube root of x to the sixth, y to the seventh, over x cubed, y to the fourth. And yeah, I mean, if it helps you understand this, we can look at it in parentheses. Uh, but I'm going to split this up looking at just the x's. So I've got x to the sixth over x cubed, which is the same as x to the sixth minus 3, which is x cubed. So in my new cubed root, I've got x cubed. Now the y's, y to the seventh over y to the fourth. And uh, those four y's are going to cancel out. 7 minus 4 is y cubed. So it's the cube root of y cubed, I'm sorry, x cubed, y cubed, which really just gives us x, y. I skipped a step. All right, divide and simplify. What I really think they want on this one is the rationalizing of that um, denominator. I suppose it's not necessary that we do yeah, because we don't get whole values on any of that stuff. So here's what I'm going to do, okay? Is I'm going to rewrite this. Oh, whoops. But um, instead of that being x to the 6th, y to the 5th in the 7th root, I'm going to write those as fractions, all right? But this x to the 6th would be x to the 6 sevenths, And my y would be y to the 5 sevenths. All right, so now I'm just going to use exponent rules. My x's, I've got x to the third minus 6 sevenths. And 3 really becomes a 21 sevenths minus 6 sevenths, which is x to the 15 sevenths, which is x to the 2 and 1 seventh. And I'm skipping a step. That's x squared times the seventh root of x. Next up, the y's. So that would be y to the fifth minus five sevenths. Now, common denominators y to the 35, 35 sevenths minus five sevenths. Oh, sorry. Yeah, y to the 30 sevenths, right? Which is the same as y to the four and two sevenths, which would give us y to the fourth times the seventh root of y squared. Now I was using the numerator x's and y's on that, right? So it's really just combined all into one. So this, just with the x's, I had x squared times the seventh root of x. It's times. And then I'm going to multiply that by y to the fourth times the seventh root of y squared. And I can rearrange this so that uh, the non-seventh roots are next to each other. x squared y to the fourth, seventh root of x times the seventh root of y squared. And I can combine my two uh, seventh roots right there, right? Seventh root of x y squared times x squared times y to the fourth. Done. Uh, I'm, I apologize. I'm going to put that multiplication between that just so it doesn't look like y to the 47. Whatever. <laughs>